So we're going to talk about cardiomyopathy. It's a relatively simple topic and it isn't tested often, but if you've got a basic understanding of cardiac anatomy and hemodynamics, it's really easy to understand. We can even break down the terminology here. So we know that pathy means disease, myo means muscle, and cardio means heart. So this is a disease of the heart muscle. So by definition, cardiomyopathy is an abnormality of heart muscle that leads to functional changes and impairment of cardiac output, okay? So um, you can see here in this image that the muscle of the ventricles is super thick. This makes it really hard for it to contract and relax like it should. Now, the most common causes are hypertension and heart failure. Um, you know, in both of those situations, the heart's working overtime and the ventricular muscle starts to change in response to that. There's three types. There's dilated, there's hypertrophic, which is what you see here, and there is restrictive. So in dilated cardiomyopathy, you can see that the muscles of the ventricles have enlarged and almost ballooned out. So the muscles get stretched out and you get really thin walls of the ventricle. It's like an overused rubber band. If you stretch it too much, it can't contract back like it's supposed to. So you get decreased contractility, which leads to a decreased cardiac output. Now, in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, you can see the ventricular muscle has actually gotten really thick. Um, so when it's that thick and it's really stiff, it doesn't have much give. Um, but also you can see that the space in the ventricle compared to normal is much, much smaller. So the space where the blood would fill is decreased as well. So not only can you not give and you can't really stretch like you should, but you can't really fill like you should either. So you have thick walls. And then you end up decreasing your filling, which is your preload. And if you decrease your preload, you decrease your cardiac output. And then finally, we have restrictive cardiomyopathy. In this type, the walls are normal size um, and it contracts just fine. The problem is they're very rigid. So it has almost no stretch. And if it can't stretch, then it struggles to fill and get a good amount of blood out to the body. So if it can't fill, then it can't put out enough blood with each beat. So you get a decreased stroke volume and therefore a decreased cardiac output. So in dilated, contractility is the problem. In hypertrophic, you've got a thick wall preload problem. And restrictive is a filling issue. Okay? So when we assess a patient with cardiomyopathy, we're going to see those signs of heart failure. It almost mimics heart failure. So you'll see poor peripheral perfusion. So you might see decreased pulses. They may be pale. Um, and then it can also lead to that volume overload because of the fluid backing up. And so you'll see things like uh, JVD, where their jugular vein pops out of their neck or you could see pulmonary edema where they've got uh, shortness of breath, pink frothy sputum, and they have a, a cough, they have crackles in their lungs. Um, and then the other thing that you'll see is this large heart on imaging. Now this could be a, a cardiovascular echo or it could be a chest x-ray like what you see here. You'll notice this heart is absolutely huge. It is taking up almost all of this space where the lung should be on the left side. And so you can imagine how much these patients are going to struggle to breathe because of this, right? So if you need to, jump back to the heart failure lessons to get a refresher on these symptoms. But again, it basically mimics heart failure, and then you're going to see this enlargement of the heart. So when it comes to therapeutic management, one thing to note is that in most cases, there's no cure. Um, a lot of times it's only supportive care. So that involves similar things that we would do for a heart failure patient, like uh, encouraging rest and for them to cluster their activities. Um, we also want to minimize their stress and treat um, their hypertension, especially if that was the cause. So this could be things like the DASH diet, sodium restriction, low sodium. We might see things like ACE inhibitors or ARBs. Um, but the one that makes the biggest difference in the case of cardiomyopathy is beta blockers. 
they help decrease the workload on the heart by decreasing that force of contraction. This will also help to decrease the oxygen demand of the heart. So it doesn't have to keep working so hard because the harder it works, the more damage it causes. And then in the later stages of cardiomyopathy, it's really possible that the patient um, could really need a heart transplant. And so one of the things that we could do is insert a ventricular assist device as a bridge to heart transplant. Um, It looks something like this here. Essentially, the purpose is for the device to pull blood out of the left ventricle of the heart and pump it into the aorta so that it can be pumped out to the body because the left ventricle can't do that by itself. Again, usually these are used as a bridge to heart transplant. So to sum up, cardiomyopathy is an abnormality of the heart muscle, which leads to functional changes and decreased cardiac output. There's three types, dilated, which is a contractility issue, hypertrophic, which is a thick wall filling issue, preload issue, and restrictive, which is a filling issue and a decreased stroke volume. Again, these symptoms will mimic cardiac output, or sorry, mimic heart failure because they decrease cardiac output. You'll see poor peripheral perfusion, volume overload, that's your JVD and your pulmonary edema. And remember that there is no cure really for cardiomyopathy. We just do supportive care. We wanna control their blood pressure, manage their symptoms, and then they may end up with an LVAD as a bridge to transplant if necessary. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.